Today we're gonna make the selfie a little more personable. Hey guys, welcome back, Mr. G, your online art professor. Today's class, what are we doing today? Today we're gonna be working on the selfie portrait design. Now this is a Photoshop photo manipulation. Why am I doing a photo manipulation? Very easy, I'm not here. Uh, main reason is because my students are going to do a, a, a photo activity and you know, I love Photoshop. I love what we can do with it. Why not share that with everyone? Share it with my classes. Uh, throw a link below as to what is your favorite version of a selfie. Do you like to take a selfie outside, take a selfie inside, or take a selfie with friends? And if it's with friends, is it still a selfie or is that like a group portrait? The selfie itself is... It's a self-portrait. This is a new term that we just did a hybrid of an old term. So the self-portrait is telling the person, the viewer, about yourself. You're telling us about who you are, how you want to express and show yourself out to the world. How do we see that without you talking about it? One, a couple of high school teachers I've seen over the course of the last couple of months, they've been throwing down in their feed uh, pictures of their students, and then they have stuff around them of things that they're interested in. So my selfie would be something like this anyways, which has, I've got my banner from Sunnyvale High School, if you're Buff Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan, uh, my, skull, my skull mug that's over here because I like skulls and things like that. It's a, it's a fun thing to me. Um, we're not gonna talk about the alien guy just because I don't even know where that came from at this point. Uh, to all my Marvel stuff that I've got over here up in even my Funko Pop collection up on top. These are things about me that you guys see on the daily when you guys watch my videos. Um, tell me tell me what is your geekdom uh, interest? What is your, what's your geek fandom interest? Uh, mine is the Holy Trinity, which is your Supernatural, uh, Sherlock, and Doctor Who. I am definitely in the the multiverse of them as well as Marvel DC. I, I I just like I like geek stuff in general. That's I'm not a I'm not one to to clash against against geek stuff in general. So for this assignment, you guys are showing me your own selfie things, things that you're interested yourself. I, I had a student who graduated, and I was like, I need a couple photos of you real quick so I can use you as my model for the selfie portrait and I was like, give me a couple things that you're interested in. I like cats and I like space. I said, I got that covered. That is easy for me. So let's jump into the build. So the first thing you can do is we gotta set up a panel. What size of our canvas are we gonna be working with? Now for me, you're gonna switch this to inches because I wanna work on an eight by 10 landscape for the selfie. Reason we're doing an eight by 10 is because that is the traditional headshot uh, picture that you're gonna be working with. So I'm gonna pull in some pictures now so when you go in to pull pictures, go to your file where you've loaded all of your images. Now, what I like to do first is pull in all my images at once. So when it brings it in, it's gonna have you size it up directly first. For me, I'm just pressing enter. I'm just pressing enter over all of the images and then I will go back and I will turn images on and off in that bottom lower right hand corner. Notice how in the bottom right hand corner you can see the images as they're coming in, they have an eye on. I'm gonna click on the eye to turn off the images that I don't need. So it's a very simple process. You load the images in and then as you are selecting those images out, you just turn them on and off. Next step is we're gonna click on the magic wand brush. It's the fourth image from the top there on the left side column. And then at the top, I don't know if you saw, but I clicked on select image or select subject on that top bar. So once you select the subject, it'll automatically select the image overall. And from there you can uh, add or delete things from the selected image. Next to that, you're gonna select mask. Now that mask element is going to then T put a gray filter now I like I like using the red filter image on mine and that's going to show what is going to be deleted or masked out of the overall image once you've done that go down to the very bottom on the right side of that column you're going to select the one that says select new layer uh, you're going to create a new layer for the mask and the image and that is going to then provide you with multiple same copies of the same image but by putting it on a new layer itself it makes it a lot easier to read in the process now at this point you have to think about how we're going to be stacking those images overall so i want to have one image stacked on top of another because the girl that i was talking with about this again this is a former student of mine she said she was in the cast and she likes space i'm like i right, cool i got that so what we're going to do is we're going to pull some cat images and we're going to put her with an astronaut buddy 
and both of them are going into space one of them is a cat and I'm going to then just select and mask out the pieces that I don't need. Now for masking, here's the key thing about when you're working on a mask, click on your layer mask image and then run to make sure that your colors are black and white. So notice how on the far left column, the bottom of the column there, you have a black and you have a white. Now you're gonna press X to go back and forth between those two colors while you're working. Now, that's what I do. I hit X to select if I'm going to go to uh, the white or the black, whichever one is on top is the image that is the color that you're gonna be working with what I'm doing now in this next section is I've changed up my brushes notice how the brushes in the top left hand corner there so it tells you uh, if you have a fa uh, faded brush or a, a round brush that has soft or a hard or a hard line to it soft liner is going to give you much more of a fade off effect whereas the hard line is going to have those hard rigid elements of the circle uh, that works it depends on what you're trying to cut out that's my rule of thumb is when I'm trying to cut out a specific image I definitely want to look towards the faded out version so the soft brush then uh, move into the hard brush again if that becomes necessary for those uh, where I'm trying to add in a uh, specific line it has to be a hard cut another thing that I found over in this I don't know I think it's this version of Adobe is when I'm masking out my images and I know that you can do it to automatically reload the brush and I found that out later on down the line uh, up there at the top on the top bar towards the left side there it has the color swatch it should stay black and then you, if you click the little drop down there it says load brush if you click it double click it and you can then automatically reload the brush every time that you use it which would be what I would recommend is so that auto reloads never has to go out and you have to reload your brush uh, with the color that's just one of those things that uh, I definitely think it's a it's a practice thing. You got to see it in in over and over again to, to get it. Uh, but for most of this project here, we're just going to be isolating out different images and we're stacking those layers together. So the layer that is the most high on the stack on that bottom right hand corner, that is the image that's going to be on top. If you want to deduct images out pieces of images out and, and how you're going to layer those images together that's what comes into play when dealing with photoshop so think about the process what is your what images do you want people to see if you want them to see something and you have an image on top so right here on top i'm, I'm masking out um my student real quick and she's um i want to i want to get just her head so that it can sit inside of the helmet of the astronaut suit. To do this, I'm going to have to ice, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to use the masking tools to mask out most of her body and around the and around the outside of her head. And I don't have to mask out the full amount of her body because what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide her image under the image for the astronaut so that I can see how those two line up. Now, when you're li lining these two up, what I do recommend is changing the opacity, which is right above the um, the stack of images that you have opacity of fill. Opacity is going to give you a like a transparency element to the overall image that helps you line up your images a lot easier. That's what I, I found is seems to be so much better to work with. Uh, change the opacity. I hit Control T to change the size of the image. So hitting Control T, changing the size of the image, hitting down the opacity so I can line up the shot the way that I want to have it done. Again, I am I can mask her out or I can subtract and put her underneath the image. The reason that I'm giving you both of these is because in a future project, you're gonna be doing one or the other, where one, you're having to mask out the overall image that you see above the image that, that is below, or you're creating a window element in that top image and then you're going to put your other image below the window so that you can see through the window element see through the mask to the image below so there's there's a lot of play there's a lot of items in play where you have to think about how these items are stacking up the topmost image is what you see first and then what holes are in that image allows you to see the other things behind it uh it's definitely a layer process that you do have to understand how all that works uh, another thing down at the bottom right hand corner on single images you can change the color you can change the tonal range you can change a lot of those different things in the single image here's the trick to that when you've clicked on that and you've changed so let's say the selected curves i like using curves a lot right below that you have a little 
uh, there's a square and then a, a little drop down arrow right to the left side of that square. Um, that is going to tie that, whatever you've done in that layer, to the image that you've got right below it. So that way, any curve color elements are only tied to that one image, not to the whole image. So if you're doing this, take that into account because you might have a piece where you don't want to you want to do just something on that single layer. You don't want to do it to the overall entire image. So think about clicking that little button to maximize how much image, how much of the image that you're going to be working with. Um, now moving into the cat again, using Control T to change the size of the sh of the image itself. Uh, and I've, again, I've lowered that opacity. I've t turned on a mask so that I can create a. Um, how big or uh, how much I'm going to deduct from that image and I'm zooming in, I'm hitting control plus or minus to zoom in. So you see when I'm going in a lot faster, uh, there is a, a function on the image itself. So there's a slide ruler on the bottom left side, right below the taskbar, right at the bottom, bottom of the canvas there. You can then zoom in or zoom out of your image that way. I just use control T. I mean, sorry, control with plus or minus to plus to zoom in minus to zoom out these are just little hotkeys that you just pick up over time i will try and have a print out a worksheet for you guys so that you guys can just look at the hotkeys and see where i'm either using a cut a transform which is where i'm changing the size brushes is control b uh sometimes you just hit b on the keyboard uh to go back to brush and then v is the hand tool uh, most of these things are all very similar to when you are using word so control c is to copy control v is to paste but to just use the hotkey itself of that individual tool b is uh the brush v is the hand those are two that you're going to come into contact most if you need to move the image around notice how i'm sliding my image left and right back and forth i'm just holding the space bar while i'm using the mouse to drag that image left or right, north or south, whichever way I need to move it around. Uh, but using the space bar to just kind of put my thumb on there to, to trigger it as I'm sliding around. These are just little little tools that you learn over time and those little processes just make your life a lot easier. So what I'm doing here with the cat is I'm making two layers. One layer is gonna be darker than another layer so that when I show both layers, I'm gonna have one that has almost like a shadow effect to it. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm dealing with those whiskers. So the top one I've got at 100%, the bottom one I'm gonna put at about a 50% and then bring it back up. So what I've done is the top layer I'm gonna deduct and make it, uh, sorry, the bottom layer I'm gonna deduct and make it just a little lower. I think I'm sitting around, what is it, 55%. And the reason I'm doing that is again, so that I can erase certain sections of my image and it looks more like a faded lighter color event underneath it so that when I pull back, it really shows off quite easily what I'm being what I'm being what I see underneath that way I can have these really white whiskers on a white background and you just don't and you just can't tell uh, switched over to the round brush which is gonna give me that soft edge again real faded out effect and then as I'm deducting the full version of the color the un color underneath it is a lighter color gives it a much better tone overall now we're going to talk about going into that background a bit here uh, I noticed this line that's on my image i think it was just cut out from one of the other pieces that i did and because of that i'm not going to uh stress why because i'm gonna put another image underneath it and i can just work it work it out from there notice how as i'm moving the backdrops around i'm looking at to see what lines up the best way what looks the best when i layer it in this form or fashion this is really when you start to play around with the overall effects so i'm i'm seeing that i have this white bar at the bottom and i've got to find a way to cover that so what am i going to do uh right now i've got some black and we're just, i'm just going to paint it black why because the backdrop is black the side is black and i can just mirror those two elements together and it just creates a more more faded effect now the one thing i, I noticed is when i did I, I think i pressed control or shift to create those straight lines uh create a diagonal line on one of those and it just did not work out the way that i was hoping it uh and the reason that it didn't work out well is because i'm noticing that the overall bit of the image there is cropped or the way that it's cropped it just doesn't work out for me so i'm using a another layer of the overall image that i had prior where we've got the cat and what i'm doing is i'm just taking uh that bit of black fabric that i can see 
I duplicated the layer and I'm just gonna erase out those parts of it that I don't need. So I can just move the same amount of shape and texture into place and it covers all that stuff very easily without a whole lot of effort on my part and that's one of those things i like to see a lot is where i can do something very simplistically by just shifting those colors around now bringing those that star pattern on top i'm going to go through the the different texture elements the the different layer options that we have so for this one i've selected lighten and that's going to take away the black backdrop and this is one of those things where you just got to get in and play around with those different ways of how it looks. Do you want to have a lot of uh, subtraction in those elements? I want to get that star pattern in there. So just erase the star over the main two subject people. And then I wanted to leave a little bit on some of the surfaces that we got around there. Why? Because it's a space theme. So if it's a space theme, I want to showcase that space theme off. Now, last thing before we close out is saving those pieces. Alt, Control, Shift, W to export that overall image. Uh, once you do that and you click on export, that's going to save it to the file where you want to save it as. Remember, for these images and for my for my class here, my class, you have to upload your images into Teams so that I can check off your classwork. Uh, for those of you that are watching this uh, on your own and you're doing your own Photoshop thing, save it, tag me in it on IG. I look forward to seeing those wonderful images from you guys and, uh, and you guys just having a wonderful day. All right, let's get back to the closeout. Awesome guys, I hope you guys got something fun, excellent out of today's class as always. Uh Throw the comments down below of what your two cents were in this in this class today. Uh, let's go ahead and knock out our homework, which is like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out there. Many teachers, friends, students as we possibly can. Don't forget, if you guys had a question, a comment, or concern during today's class, what do you do? Raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates as always. I will see you guys in the next class. Until then, more Photoshopping for me. Check it out on IG. I'm going to put a lot of my stuff here on IG. Hope you guys have some fun with it. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Later, guys.